Welcome to Worship with Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church. It is the fourth Sunday in Lent, year A. Join us. Last week, I introduced to you Roxy Laybourne, the feather lady, who said, you would never identify a tree with your nose on the bark. You have to step back and look at the whole picture. That message was ironically fitting as we continue to look at the whole picture. This week's Women's History Month reflection was supposed to be on the women of the suffrage movement since this is the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Instead, this week's recent events, quarantine and protocols set in place because of COVID-19, I've been led down a different path. I began to think of how rural we are and how us rural women and men have weathered crises, maybe not at the level of pandemic, but maybe so. Our grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents lived through times such as the Spanish flu, the depression, wartime rationing, and more recently, the great losses that farms around here endured in the 1980s and the recession in the early 2000s. I ran across an article by Deborah Fallows from November of last year where she wrote, she wrote about rural women and I quote, Eliza Tibbetts, who planted the first navel oranges in California, Isabella Greenway, who helped shape the entire copper mining town of Ajo, Arizona, went on to found an airline company in the ironic Arizona Inn and became the first woman representing Arizona in Congress. Jerry Mock, a housewife from Columbus, Ohio, who chased the dream of Amelia Earhart to become the first woman pilot to circumnavigate the globe on her own. The women of the commons in Eastport, Maine, who are a big part of rewriting the civic, cultural, and commercial story of Eastport, Maine. And Tracy Taft, an educator and organizer who followed Isabella Greenway to Ajo, Arizona to drive its change from a failing former mining town to a thriving community-based on the arts. Bellows goes on to write that at a recent summit of rural women that she attended, she learned that the way rural women address their problems and design solutions is through action with a driving sense of practicality. She emphatically wrote, isn't that how pioneer women and immigrant women and farming women survived? 
She shared that it may surprise you that the rural women wrapped this practicality with sentiments that you might link with being too soft, weak, or self-defeating, and that they sought solutions in the places that you might consider unimportant or even a throwback to an earlier pre-feminist era. But on the contrary, she shared that she heard women suggest that these women's ways, her words, when they emerge comfortably and naturally are powerful tools to take to make actions effective and arguments accessible to more people. The message she said she heard was, Quote, do not shy from showing vulnerability, caring, or emotion. Do not apologize for it. Use it. Go into the places that are your comfort zones for work that is uncomfortable and requires you to be brave. So, rural women, be brave. I thought that would be a good message for today. It's UMCOR Sunday, so you can mail your monetary donation for our Lenten project of hygiene kits to Joyful Spirit UMC. In fact, I have it right here. You can mail your monetary donation for UMCOR, our Lenten project, to Joyful Spirit UMC Attention, UMCOR, P.O. Box 446, Wadena, Minnesota, 56482. Join me in our call to worship. We are met in the presence of God. And, and we, we do, do not, not meet alone. alone. With the angels in the highest heaven, we, we gather, gather to worship, worship the Lord. Lord. With Abraham and Sarah, we, we gather, gather to worship, worship the Lord. Lord. With the saints of every age, we, we gather, gather to, to worship, worship the Lord. Lord. You have called us and made a place for us. We embark on our own journey of faith. God's, God's holy name, name be, be praised. praised. God makes us a great people. God's, God's holy name, name be praised. praised. In the desert and in the den, in the barrio and basilica, God's, God's holy name be praised. praised. We journey in the presence of God and we, we do, do not, not journey, journey alone. alone. Lent is a time of contemplation and reflection. So please at this time, take a moment to think about your Lenten journey. Christ before me, Christ to the right of me, Christ behind me, Christ to the left of me, Christ above me, Christ all around me, Christ within me, Christ before us, Christ to the right of us, Christ behind us, Christ to the left of us, Christ above us, Christ all around us, Christ within us. Christ before us, Christ to the right of us, Christ behind us, Christ to the left of us, Christ above us, Christ all around us, Christ within us, Christ within us. Please join me in the invocation. Light of God, illumine the path that leads us to healing, hope, and salvation. Glory of God, fill this sanctuary and expose the darkness that stalks our souls. Light of God, shine with such brightness that we marvel in awe. Glory of God, fill each temple of the Holy Spirit present today. Light of God, glory of God, we, we welcome, welcome you in, in this place. Today, our joys and concerns are a little bit different since we are recording and not live and 
not in a sanctuary uh, built for worship. And we're worshiping differently today, and that's okay. Our joys and concerns, I'm going to do a little bit differently as well. I have a shell here, and I'm going to place these shells in the bowl, and this will be our bowl of joys and concerns. Joys for technology that it's allowing me to connect with you today. Joys for the health and well being of those around us and the love and caring that I see being handed across community to community. Everybody helping everybody. Prayers for Jennifer and Tom making their way back from Arizona. For little Charles, Arliss's neighbor, who had to be taken back to the hospital last week. For Larry and Lynette, while well, Larry recovers from heart surgery, he is now home with a home health nurse. For Kathy Hill and Jim, Kathy's surgery has been postponed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all students wrestling with the reality of being away from friends and school, for their safety and anxieties to be cast away and replaced by God's love, peace, and comfort. For public school employees and teachers and all employees that serve all public schools and our children, including bus drivers, social workers, nurses, safety and security officers, all those in service to the public and government for their safety and also for their well-being. For all healthcare workers, not only medical and administrative, but all staff that are serving the public in these troubling times for their safety and mental well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for our government at all levels, local, state, and federal, that carefully made decisions are being implemented successfully and without delay. Prayers for our, all of those affected by COVID-19. May healing come swiftly and without delay. And prayers for our church family and all of our members. May they be safe and at peace from their anxieties in this uncomfortable, difficult, isolating time. And for all prayers that lie silently on our hearts, for you know them, Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today's gospel reading is from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41, adapted for today's worship service. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. He was born blind so the power of God could be seen in him. All of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent me, because there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. But while I am still here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smothered the mud over the blind man's eyes. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back, seeing. His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, Is this the same man, that beggar? I am the man. No, but he surely looks like him. I am the man. Who healed you? What happened? The man they called Jesus made mud and smoothed it over my eyes and told me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash off the mud. I went and washed and now I can see. Where is he now? I don't know. Then they took the man to the Pharisees. Now as it happened, Jesus had healed the man on a Sabbath. The Pharisee asked the man all about it, so he told them, he smoothed the mud over my eyes, and when it was washed away, I could see. This, this man, Jesus, is not from God. 
He is working on the Sabbath. But how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? He is not from God. But such miracles. This man who opened your eyes, who do you say he is? I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders wouldn't believe he had been blind. So they called to his parents. Is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he see? We know this is our son and that he was born blind, but we don't know how he can see or who healed him. He is old enough to speak for himself. Ask him. They said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. For the second time, they called in the man who had been blind and told him, Give glory to God by telling the truth, because we know Jesus is a sinner. I don't know whether he is a sinner or not, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. But what did he do? How did he heal you? Look, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his, one of his disciples too? You, you, you're his disciple? But we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know anything about him. Why, that's very strange. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know anything about him? Well, God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Never since the world began has anyone been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't do it. You were born in sin. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Because I would like to. You have seen him. He is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe. I have come to judge the world. I have come to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Are you saying we are blind? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty. But you remain guilty because you claim you can see. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. Last week, I introduced you to Roxy Laybourne during our Women's History Reflection Time. She's the scientist who said, you would never identify a tree with your nose on the bark. You have to step back and look at the whole picture. I'm sure that seems more fitting now than ever before. We need to step back and look at the whole picture. This time of isolation and quarantine is very difficult, but it is for the greater good. In today's gospel, I hear Jesus trying to teach the Pharisees what it seems they do not understand. They say they are disciples of Moses and yet do not see the meaning in their discipleship. Instead, just the laws. Jesus then finds the blind man who now sees and asks him, do you believe in the son of man? The man who now sees says, who is he, sir? Because I would like to. And Jesus answers, you have seen him. He is speaking to you. And immediately the man now sees and exclaims, yes, Lord, I believe. The man who now sees is seeing the promise of Moses. Jesus, the living word of God. The truth is right in front of the Pharisees, but they cannot see. They cannot see. Jesus said, you remain guilty because you claim you can see. What does Jesus mean? Is he telling the Pharisees that their religiosity is keeping them from seeking the living word of God? From knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior? What do we do when we are challenged by others about our beliefs? Does our light dim? Do we begin to doubt? Or do we challenge the questioner? Much like 
the man who now sees, challenged the Pharisees. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know anything about him? Because you do know Jesus, and you know he hears those who worship him. Be confident in your faith. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I have come to judge the world. I have come to give sight to the blind and to show those who think they see that they are blind. What I hear Jesus saying in today's gospel is to not be settled in the comforts of our religiosity. I don't believe Jesus is asking us to be more religious, but instead to be more intent on seeking truth and justice. Do not settle for rules that keep you from doing God's will. If God puts you to work on Sunday, go to work on Sunday. Do not let others who doubt dim your light or dim your message that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that through him you have eternal life. Please join me in today's offertory prayer. Everything the Lord and the world needs is in front of us. The spirit and will to live, thrive, and survive. The power to make a difference. The grace and mercy of God. Please pray with me. Lord, we come now to offer our talents, our hearts, our love, our everything. You continue to make a way when there doesn't seem to be one. You ask that we lay everything on the altar and be made whole. Lord, we do. Bless, keep, mold, shape, heal us in every way. Amen. Please join me in singing the doxology. Today is all we have. We will rejoice, we will be renewed, and we will learn from the past, cherish today, and welcome the future because God has given us a powerful and sacred history. We will teach and learn, speak and listen, and grow strong every day of every month. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Today, I will leave you with this poem. In the wake of the troubled times that we live in, Reverend Susan uh, Nineber, the Big Waters District Superintendent for our conference, wrote in a message from conference this week that this poem helped her. It is written, uh, was just written recently by a priest in Ireland named Brother Richard Hendrick. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But, they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, 
The sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family all around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary, all over the world. People are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there doesn't have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how you live now. Today, breathe. Listen to the factory noises of your panic. The birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. Shine.